Pick a card. Your obsession exposed, but not to people. What are you focused on to the exclusion of all else? Find out more in-depth information to help you on your journey. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you at your reading. Hi friends, my name is Crystal with Psychic MD and I'm here to do another reading for you. This is a pick a card and this time we are going to focus on obsession. And it may not be as salacious as it sounds, disclaimer, but I'd like to get to the nitty gritty of obsession, whether it's a person or a thing or whatever the deal is, okay? So if you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping in. I hope that you find something helpful here. And for those of you that are repeat offenders, thank you so much for coming by. We're gonna go ahead and pick from this deck right here. And I want three cards regarding obsession. Show me what I need to see for pile number one, two, and three. And show me now. Here's one, two, and three. One is going to be gratitude. Appreciate, present, blessings. <clears throat> Trying to read over the shoulder of my camera. That was awkward. <laughs> Okay, this is so pretty. Hard work, commitment, and perseverance. That's card number two. And card number three is breathe. Inhale, exhale, create space within. I'll leave a picture of them all and go ahead and choose your pile and I'll see you there. Hi, pal one. If you chose this card, gratitude, then this message is for you. I'm going to get a little sagey sage just because. Clear out any previous energies. Okay. Paul number one, if you missed the intro and if you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome. Hope you find something here that's entertaining or helpful or healing. And for those of you repeat offenders, thank you so much for stopping back. So you chose gratitude. And we have the rainbow here. And I feel like for you, Paul number one, I feel like there have been a lot of things that have like challenged you. I feel like you've been having, you've been having, ha, <laughs> we're not speaking too pretty here today, but you've had your back pressed up against the ball quite a bit. Um, I feel like you've had to overcome a lot of obstacles. It seems like every time uh, you turn around, you're taking on a new journey. And it, I kind of feel like, you know, meaningless, a chasing after the wind, sort of. It seems like, okay, well, I conquered that. Now what? Now what? Now what? And I feel like with this card, this is talking about, you know, appreciate present blessings um and it's not all about having to move on to the next thing on to the next thing I feel like your brain is pre-programmed to continue okay what comes next okay what comes next and I can well relate to this so I'm not saying that you are deliberately ungrateful or that you're always kind of like glossing over the current situation and looking forward to like whatever the future has to do I do feel like you have had a life in a system and a, a method of doing things that you just roll up your sleeve and you do look at like, what do I have to do now? But with the motive of pressing towards the future, always towards a goal. Okay, I have to get up and work because I have to make my rent next month or, you know, whatever it is. I have to raise my kid because I have the future generation on my hands. I'm all of it. But I don't think that it stops there. I think that this is a chronic chronic case of looking towards the next thing and the next and the next this can manifest in many different ways like you could um get friends and constantly looking for new friends that kind of a thing or you can be binging on um 
Netflix or uh, any shows and things like that, just kind of onto the next, what happens next, instead of sort of enjoying the moment, like, wow, that was really cool, okay. Um, and having a little bit of temperance. So the focus right now is going to be um, about you trying to reel that in whatever capacity, because I feel like most of us know it's not healthy to do that. And I am so guilty of doing this. I'm just like, all right, what's next? And I don't think about appreciating, you know, whatever is current current circumstances. And it seems like you're sleeping on the sun. It's like you have a lot of blessings right now that you may not be noticing, even with the rainbow right here, um, simply because you're really focused on like monumental obstacles and wondering like what other thing I have to climb in order to get to this thing and what am I doing it all for? And um, I feel like there could be some tears involved here and there could be quite a few fears for sure. And I think that um, when you do go to bed and you close out the day, you wind up thinking about what is sunny, like what do I have to look forward to, but not look around your current life. Okay, this could be looking forward to people that are not close to currently, or this could be like looking forward to trips or looking forward to retirement. None of those things are bad within um, balance, but I feel like we're talking obsession here. So this is an obsessive tendency. It is about um, running and not uh, catching your breath. Okay, and that's why I feel like it makes it uh, unhealthy. I'm going to move this guy. So we have gratitude for the present. <clears throat> See what else we got. So this is not wagging my finger at you. Again, show me what I need to see. For pile number one, what do we have to be grateful for? How can we kind of curb, curtail, and redirect this obsession so that we're able to be in the present moment? And show me now. I was shown an image of you being very, very weary, exhausted. And almost like carrying a soul or carrying a body. Yeah, devilish ways. Your devious ways create a touch of danger that is hard to resist. There's a dark side of you that keeps them intrigued in the fight. I think that's what I've been sensing the whole time during this reading so far is that you have that not oppositional energy, but just a fighter, a fighter spirit. You have the power to make the opposite sex fight for you, provoking jealousy and those that fall under your spell. But okay, and then that might be a thing. But even more than that, I feel like you have a fighter spirit willing to take on whatever task simply because you've been through it all with little or no direction, with little or no clarity. And I do feel like that is going to be ending soon, by the way, as far as not having direction or clarity, okay? Now, you could have a reputation of somebody who is a little bit like uh, has a hair trigger. There's not a lot of pressure that needs to be applied in order for that trigger to go off, that kind of a thing. And I feel like a lot of that is pent up pressure from simply feeling stressed out about, you know, and, and what next? And how do I make my bills the next time? And how do I do this? And how do I manage that? So you could be um, somebody who is studying even the differences between the parasympathetic and the sympathetic um, system. You could be stuck in that fight or flight. And usually, I feel like for you, currently you're stuck in the fight, okay? In the thick of it, running the rat race, the gauntlet. Undecided. In this lifetime, you're given the opportunity to fulfill, explore options to prepare you for the next. And as a result, you may experience many new adventures. Well, that's interesting because we're talking about next, next, what is next? So that's what you are going to have to um, <clears throat> kind of develop that skill where you can bring yourself into um, a current Mindset, basically, being mindful, even having a meal without having the TV turned on or the phone in your hand, um, having the house be quiet and allow it to be that way for, you know, a change. And uh, any of those things are going to really assist you to be really present. And the reason why that's important is because gratitude definitely brings in more abundance. 
for sure. But if we're working ourselves to death, to the bone, and weary as hell, what is the point? There's not a lot of point. What are you getting out of it other than running around ragged? So, this obsession that plagues pile number one. Tell me more about this obsession and show me now. I'd like two cards. Here's one. The Page of Pentacles. And here's two. <clears throat> Justice. So you could be somebody who is really cautious with how you spend your money, how you pay your bills, what you invest your time, energy, and effort into, wondering if, you know, it's like you don't do anything like without motive. It has to have a direction, a motive, and a clear, it benefits my tomorrow type thing instead of just enjoying the moment. You're not somebody who's going to take up like finger painting or drawing or something for the heck of. And although you may have in the past, I feel like currently your energies are well you know i can draw really well can i make some money off that can i get my hustle on a little bit like that little bit of that um rat race culture that we're so accustomed to and some of us even addicted to and so here we have justice it's like uh, there is a need for a balance and justice justice does have typically the scales and i guess you can kind of see them here a little bit dark um, and with the sun right here, I feel like that's an echo. So there has to be a balance with the scales in order for you to rest, in order for the sun to shine and you to appreciate it because the sun does shine right now, but many of us are not really even paying attention. We are so focused on the next, on the next, on the next, okay? Um, we could have our, our dukes up like this girl. We could be on the defensive currently. Show me what I need to see. More information for pile number one on this obsession and show me now. Okay. <clears throat> yep. I'm going to take another card. Hello. I'm going to take another card here. All right. So I have the page of swords. And this is my quintessential spy digging into things. This is a researcher potentially, but also somebody who is looking at what the Joneses have. Um, I'm even looking at the floor and it looks like that checkmate situation. Like I'm going to get all the information so that I know how to do this, that, the other, that kind of a thing. Um, so maybe you are somebody whose brain naturally Rubik's Cubes things um, in a certain manner so that you can have the most desired outcome possible. And while that's not necessarily negative in itself, it does keep you in a state of what's next, what's next, wanting to be 10 steps ahead of other people. And now this 10 of wands, it's a big burden because this person hasn't stopped for a rest. And even the deer, the buck, whatever it is back here, um, they are watching this man toil long and hard and not even turn around and look at them. Um, so this person can't even appreciate the grass blades beneath his feet or the beautiful sunset or sunrise, whatever this is going to be, or even the, um, the animals behind them. Why did I just have a brain fart? I'm like, <laughs> so let's see what else we need to know for pile number one. Show me more about this. I feel like, yeah, overworking, overworking the brain, overthinking everything. Show me what I need to see. Show us what can really help heal and help put pile number one in a different trajectory concerning this obsession of what's next, what's next. And show me now. Okay, I'm going to take all three. Universe, we're all just stardust. And that just reminds me, it's like no matter how much we toil, even if we have the biggest and bestest and baddest toys, it's like we wind up, you know, in the same place in the very end with nothing. You can't take it with you. Um, and so I feel like if you can focus on things that are less tangible, less in the material realm, that's going to make you a lot happier. Just to even understand like a kindness, um, a loving word, a favor, whatever, that is going to really help. I even feel like the world go round <laughs> in some ways, but that's going to help you. Evil queen, you deserve sugar, not salt. Yeah, it's really funny because, you know, sugar and salt look identical. And um, But this, I feel like, has to do with your personal power. And interesting. 
interesting. You could be perceived actually as being the evil queen right now. Or this could be somebody in your life currently that you are focused on, fixated on, and being the evil queen. But regardless of the situation, it's like sugar is really not that good for you anyways. And salt, well, it's a necessity. Um, not that we're like dousing stuff with it, but I think it's scurvy that we get, I think. Anyways, but you get the point. So right now you could have like a named villain in your story, or you can be going through your villain era <clears throat> the same that um, Alice talks about in her channel. I feel like we all stole that. And escape is. So come home to yourself. Yeah, so this is about us just kind of what's next, what's next. But we don't feel what's in our bodies, what's in our hands, what's in our current situation. And even explore like the whys behind that as well. Like why are things currently this way? Um expressing gratitude for the small things that we have a roof over our heads if we have one even if it's borrowed even if it's temporary or if it's a vehicle um being grateful for the weather and so on and so forth so let me get a little bit more energy here oh okay we wanted this one pile number one Ooh, music Music has the ability to transport you to different realms by activating and igniting your body, making your magic rituals and healing even more potent. And I heard that song in my head, music makes you lose control. So maybe there's something about getting out there and putting some music on, shaking your booty. That might be a good thing for you or even doing it in the house. No big deal. But um, that will actually get rid of excess energy, things like anxiety, things like that. Um, there's a lot of healing modalities out there that utilize belly dancing or tapping or um, listening to music or even composing music. They have some apps for that as well. That would be kind of fun. So maybe that's something that you might want to tap into in order to really kind of heal the energies that make you feel so stressed that you always want to think what's next, but also to bring you to the present and feeling each note and feeling and thinking about how that is affecting you. So I think that's pretty neat. What else does pile number one need to hear and show me now regarding this obsession? Catalyst, yep. You're someone that evokes progress and change in people, making them aware that something could be better, leaving them forever changed. And yeah, your life can definitely be better. Okay, so I feel like even maybe with this blue on her mouth, um, some of you guys are not speaking your truth. And some of you guys don't even have the words to express the hardships that you've been through because of all this like darkness back here. And I can well relate to that as well. We're gonna go ahead and pull um, some cards to clarify with that. I don't wanna make this reading super long, but I do wanna do these guys. We're just gonna put them out here because these are the worst to try to, to try to shuffle, okay? <laughs> and for pile number one, what do I need to see that would be encouraging and helpful for pile number one regarding the obsession of thinking what's next, what's next? It's like the runner that never stopped running. And show me now. Egg. Success assured with good plans and hard work. Absolutely. That's really cool, but I do think that falls in line with there's a time and a season for everything. And now's the time to kind of really um, make an assessment of what you currently have and enjoy what it is that you have, um, you know, without trying to step forward into the future too much heart great happiness and oddly enough that involves music again maybe you guys want to take on like a new instrument or do something different that would kind of lighten your mood and bring you into the present control your anger or you will be sorry with lightning and behind the camera this almost even looks like a dancer that's kind of interesting but i see right now like a head and an arm and like a chest and dancer legs so we could have some issues with anger. Weeping Willow, family sorrow, yeah. 
could be going through some family trials and tribulations right now and really struggling with that, but it's going to be important and helpful if you focus on what you currently have and what's going on with you right now. For the axe forces are working against you. That's probably why you feel like you're always pushing and striving um, and swimming uphill in a way. Protection from a powerful friend. This is a dog. So maybe you're having issues with your friends as well. In need of help, assistance, and guidance. Yeah. And I feel like you'll definitely get that when you start getting more into gratitude, just being grateful for things that you currently have, things coming your way, um, and not focusing so much on what you want outcomes to be and futures and things like that. And just allowing with an open hand for things to come to you naturally. Last card to help pile number one, which justice is coming. We got the justice card essentially twice. Yeah, because that other card was justice as well. So you will get your comeuppance and you will be recognized for what it is that you've been attempting to do. Um, things that have been hidden in the dark will start coming out to the light and that'll be a good thing. Everything in due time. So try not to take too much upon yourself. The universe, God's spirit has your back. And with that, I will leave you. Please do like, share, comment, subscribe. Until next time, namaste. Hat pile number two, if you chose this card with the beautiful bees, hard work, commitment, and perseverance, then this message is for you. Before we get started, we're going to go ahead and get some sagey sage up in this here. And while we do that, I'd like to thank you guys that are new to my channel for stopping in. Also, for those of you Pete offenders for stopping by again. I appreciate all of you and I hope that you all get exactly what it is that you came here for. Now, we're here to explore your obsession, whatever that might look like to you. And it doesn't take a genius to know, yeah, hard work. So I feel like you're, you know, I mean, it's spelled out here, you're obsessed with work, but also you could be somebody who is obsessed with your community, with bringing things together, with maybe even volunteering or working your nine to five and then some. Maybe some of you guys are going into work like early, 30 minutes early and not clocking in and doing whatever. Um, and then staying late afterwards. I think that, you know, that's a, a specific type of group. I don't think, I think that in today's culture, that's just really been canceled a long time ago. But anyways, you could be working for like Habitat for Humanity or raising funds for the homeless or the underprivileged or programs for children, whatever it is. I feel like you pour your blood, sweat and tears into and you are somebody who is um, systematically going about things. It's like, okay, I need to fill this one cell with honey and I need to do this for this and so on and so forth. So you are very um, methodical in the things that you are doing and that is going to be really, really helpful. Um, I even think about like how they, they people sometimes put like beds right on top of the the bees you know they have like bees and that way they can feel the vibration of the bees and that is being used to like treat different things like ptsd and things like that so maybe perhaps something that you are doing working on is um helping with people with ptsd or helping the collective in some way shape and form and I can't help but think of like current affairs and things that are going on right now. And maybe you are campaigning and crusading to show people the truth about what is going on and things like that. Um, you could have many people's eyes on you, but you could also have um, stumbled across people that are willing to assist you and all of you working together, kind of like hive mind would be um, beneficial to this. Okay, I got this one that I pulled. And what else do we have for pile number two? Pile number two, 
this obsession for pile number two. Show me a little bit about that and show me now. I feel like you are considered unconventional and nobody would even know that you are quote working. Maybe you're somebody who's not even technically employed and you are working. Again, this could be volunteering or doing programs um, and working hard at things that people don't necessarily see and you're not necessarily seeing a paycheck for. Mystical. Something very mystical about you, which gives people the impression that you're very much in your power. And you are. Pile number two, you definitely are. I like that. So let's take one more. And we have Divergent. You stand out from the rest, the way you think, the way you dress. It's rare and unique, making you very desirable. And this could be completely, completely like your aesthetics, exactly how it says here, what you wear, how you think, and things like that is very different. Um, but I even think that even more important are the words that are coming out of your mouth, the way that you communicate, whatever your passion is, whatever it is that you are currently working on, this thing that people maybe don't see at first that you are really toiling long and hard for. I'm trying to see if I can get this all within the frame. Okay, well, that was that. So let's get some more cards here. We're gonna use these guys, pile number two. I feel like there's something like a an element of serving humanity you could be in the um some legal field not so much legal but like the healing arts i feel like alternative medicine or attracted to alternative medicine um a reiki practitioner any one of those even like rebirthing for healing purposes that would be something Show me what I need to see for the obsessiveness or the obsession for pile number two. What's going on with that? I need three cards and show me. And card number one, we have a stalemate. Mm -hmm. And two, we have the emperor. And three. Okay, so five of cups. So this is saying that maybe even you are at a stalemate currently. Um, maybe you're working hard at something, but also that maybe you hit a brick wall or something like that. Why would that be? Because you hit the emperor. And I can't help but think also this can have a lot to do with the emperor to me has to do with like your foundation with, um, this person is going to be like, I know best. I know how to do things. You could have somebody in your life like that, where it's like, I know the best way to do it. And this is the only way. And that's how it's properly done. End of story. And, uh, but this also can signify people in power that perhaps shouldn't be. And this could be leading up to like a stalemate here. Why things are kind of at a standstill. Why perhaps you need to make a decision. But there's a lot of emotion behind it. And you're not entirely sure what you're going to decide. And you've been contemplating for a while. This is not anything new. And Five of Cups, this has caused you a lot of grief. I feel like you put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this. I can't even move this camera. It's making me crazy. Um, but unfortunately, it hasn't, like, you haven't reaped the rewards of what you thought was going to happen. Or maybe you haven't been recognized. Or maybe whatever you were toiling for, the project got put to a stop because somebody walked in with red tape and said, yeah, you know, you have to apply for this paperwork in order to do what you're doing. Or something to that effect and um that stopped your efforts entirely so there's a lot of um not being able to i feel like a lot of weariness first of all a lot of exhaustion but also a lot of like mental fatigue just feeling like i can't anymore um and i feel like you're definitely somebody who's high vibe looking out for the collective just kind of flip this card here. Self-reliance. You're an independent free spirit who's here to teach and learn love and freedom. Enabling others to experience and master self-love and independence. And that's interesting because I'm thinking about that exactly. You could be 
um, you know, with groups that are affiliated with, uh, you know, not towing the line with what governments are setting up right now and, you know, things with uh, Bitcoin and foreign policies and um, having the 15 minute city agendas and all of those things. And it could be, you know, that you are really fighting for freedom and other people don't see it that way. They see you just toiling or maybe not even working, quote unquote, but you're doing a ton um, and be known to other people. Indigo Child. It is your mission to access higher wisdom, knowledge, and intelligence so you can bring it back down to Earth, to the planet Earth, yeah. And so I feel like whatever it is that you are doing, I feel like this is definitely like a good idea, good program, good work, good elbow grease and all. Uh, but it's put you in a situation where maybe the masses are against you, people don't understand you, and it's caused you a lot of hardship, maybe even financial losses, definitely emotional losses. And... Um, almost like a wit, a desire to go back to good old times, but feeling in your heart that um, those times are gone. It's like, it's like being on a movie set and when you see all the props and everything for what they really are, feeling it's extremely disappointing. You can't enjoy the movie anymore. I mean, it's way more than that, but you get the gist. If you guys watch The Juror on uh, Netflix, I think it's Netflix, I think. Well, anyways, that would be the same thing that the juror experienced at the very end. It's like, whoa, you know, I did, I was doing all this good. And then all of a sudden to find out it was one big facade. And yeah, he got, you know, compensated monetarily. But what did that do to his psyche and his level of trust in people overall is debatable. Pal 2. This obsession with working hard, with getting people together for even healing vibration and raising the vibration of the earth, of just in general. Maybe it's even trying to adhere to things like um, Dr. Sebi's cures and things like that and how you find out that, you know, the company has been sold and, of course, Dr. Sebi passed on um, and those can be their own special challenges. I think he lived in Honduras and there was a center there in Honduras, but now who knows what's going on there because it's no longer um, the real program. Anyways, I digress, but you could be encountering those walls in your life right now. Throne. Your potential is endless. And yeah, number 45. Well, let's I almost teeter this down. Um, number four about your stability foundation. The number 1111 is echoing that foundation. And, of course, your emperor right here is the number four. So I feel like the number fours could be important to you right now. But uh, your possibilities are endless. I feel like you just need to kind of recoup, regroup. And if you need to have a cry, please do have a cry. But know that you, um, there's this room that's being rolled out for you that you cannot possibly see right now. And all of your effort, your blood, sweat, and tears will not go in vain or unnoticed. And that's really difficult, especially when you're having feelings like this. So show me what I need to see for pile number two. Pile number two. Much love to you if this is your story. Pile number two. Obsession for pile number two. Show me now. Mural. Be your own first priority. Yeah. And I almost am looking at this. It's like a castle. I know she's like, you know, drawing a mural and stuff. But I feel for you, it's more like you're seeing things go up in flames. And um, things have been kind of going on a down downward spiral um, for a long time. Especially with a lot of things being uncovered that we never knew before. Um, but this can put you in a space where you are feeling vulnerable. Where you're feeling despair, hopeless, helpless. Um, where you're feeling sad, where you're feeling isolated, alone, and, you know, just to be real, you are definitely not alone, and Spirit's saying that you're not alone, um, continue your fight, but first of all, take care of you before you engage any further. Call number two, it's a really heavy quest, call number two, I feel you. Call number two. This obsession for call number two and show me now. <laughs> wow. 
Linus. You've earned all your stripes. Yeah, and it's funny because we're talking about almost like living in a fairy tale, living on a set like the Truman Show or the Juror, that show, you know, any of one of those. And um, we're able to see beyond the facade and know a lot of certain things that we never knew before. And I feel like it's just a time to kind of set things down and enjoy yourself, get some sun and relax a little bit because you've been through quite a bit. The number one, take care of you. It echoes that mural card as well. And number three, I feel like you're gonna get more collaboration, okay? With your project, what it is that you are currently um, obsessing over or focused on. But there is a timeout that needs to be taken so that you can, um, yeah, recharge to go at it again, basically. Or maybe even get down ones that are going to be a little bit different than what you think. Going out to the sun and getting downloads from the sun can be a thing for you, sun gazing. Going to the beach and recharging that way as well. Um, try going online and resetting your um, vagus nerve. That would be a really good thing for you. If you don't know what that is, look it up. That would help. I can't show you because I'd have to flip the camera. Any more things for pile number two regarding this obsession? For pile number two, any encouragement help? Show me what I need to see and show me now. Illuminator, look at you. Little baddie. Your radiant energy that lights up any room with great power to heal those around you. What I say. And crack their hearts wide open. That's right. This gift can make people run from your light. And you could have people running from you because you're um they could be thinking, well, you're kind of you drink some weird Kool-Aid and what's going on with you, and you're a conspiracy theorist. And I mean, they could be just completely not understanding anything about you at this point in time. And yeah, that could be definitely painful. Um, but I feel like you have full support here so last messages from this deck that i cannot shuffle anymore big hug to you pile number two i definitely echo that sentiment pile number two anything that's gonna help show me now we have the eagle triumph over troubles and obstacles yeah there's a lot about flying higher thought patterns downloads illuminating the world in june i feel like things are going to get better for you um and for us well when when i'm uh, recording this it's july right now so it could be like a year or things could just be changing like last month things could have started changing for you anything else we have the dog close-up pleasure with a close friend so maybe you can have a friend that's going to help you. Yeah, an unsuccessful plan. So maybe you're feeling like stonewalled, like you can't just, you know, make another go with this. Um, <coughs> excuse me. As you hit another barrier. But I feel like uh, getting together with this friend is going to really help you. Um, somebody who sees your soul on a soul level. Somebody who understands your mission, your hard work. I feel like uh, there'll be words exchanged, like good words of wisdom and help. Kangaroo. Unsettled times need to plan ahead. Yeah. And I think that you see that clearly coming 2,000 miles away, especially with this illuminator. And you're, um, you could even be warning friends and family and things like that of what is going on February. So February, there could be a great storm. And that's something that you're trying to prepare everyone for. Your loved ones, yourself, and sunrise. New creative ideas, new ventures, and a fresh start. So I do feel like overall you are going to get the healthy assistance that you need. But you need other people in order to help your mission. Because this mission feels really, really big. Greater than most, I'm going to say. And that could be a very her very heavy burden to carry as well so if this is your pile and if it made sense to you please do give me a like share comment subscribe otherwise much love and healing to you encouragement to you until next time namaste
Hi, pal three. If you chose this card, the breathe, inhale, exhale, create space within, then this pile is for you. Now you're wondering why I'm holding this? Well, guess who forgot about all of the new red tape on YouTube? I'm not trying to get flagged or have any issues. So I'll have to modify the intro as well. But pile three, I'm going to get a little bit of sagey sage on this one I'm going to put down here. There is a need for you to maybe take better care of yourself. <clears throat> maybe you're having some anxiety. Maybe you're even forgetting things like I did. <laughs> so all of those are possibilities. So for pile number three, show me what I need to see for pile three. If you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome. And for those of you that are repeat offenders, thank you so much for stopping by. Show me what I need to see. Two cards for pile number three, the obsession. The breathe card has this here for pile three. Show me it now. Change, yep. Change is a coming. New season of life. So some of you guys, depending on your age, you could be experiencing some like hormonal changes and things like that. Maybe you're transitioning from like maiden to crone, <laughs> things like that, which I can more relate to, but it is a new season for you. And it could be uncharted territory is what I heard. So it's gonna take a minute for you to kind of acclimate and balance this out in your energy field, head, logic, and evaluation. Yep. Knocking things over. You could be somebody who likes to sew or likes to use different fabrics or different mediums. Um, when there were times that I paint, but I like to use different types of mediums. Um, paper and pens and pencils and different whatevers. But you could be somebody like that. You could be looking at different contracts as well. And you could have your head completely filled with like contracts and what are you going to do? And is this going to be a good move or a good, um, I heard commission for you. Okay. But is it going to be a good thing for you to do? So you could have a lot on your mind. If there is a need to kind of slow down, breathe, know that you are entering a different season and that's going to be good and apply everything in a manner or approach everything that is going to be, I guess, way slowed down from what you're at now, where you're at now, because I think you have an obsessive um, need or tendency to kind of rush things going too fast and getting overwhelmed with decisions um, and utilizing log logic. So let's see what else we have here. Show me what I need to see for a pile three. I would like two more cards and hopefully not the moody ones, but you know. And show me now. Oh, that's pretty. I don't think I've ever seen this card. Garden, something lovely will grow from this. So if you're feeling anxiety, there is good to be had by this change, by things being different, by this new season. I even think of like the fall, right? Uh-oh, don't do that. Hold on. Like the fall. Biblical fall. Oh, ironic that I knocked over the stone and it got her naked again. But we do the best we can. One more. Pile three wings. You never needed those wings to fly. So I think it's going to be a matter of you, you know, looking at this logically. I feel like in some way this could be saying that um, if you don't slow down, you're going to make decisions that are more emotionally based. And by doing that, you might accrue a lot more debt than you need to or make financial decisions that are not going to be good at this point in time. Um, you don't want to do things that you regret as well. So there's need for you to slow down and get centered and pray if you're the praying type, meditate, do some breathing exercise. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. Getting downloads from the sun, from being in nature is going to be helpful. Oh, hey. Okay, we're taking them all. See? Rushing energy. Let's just rush right through it. Demolisher. You have the ability to step out of the past and let go of old energies. Step to step into the new era with ease. You thrive on change. And that's this. Pardon me. The change that we're talking about. Sweetheart. I love this card. So cute. You live from love. Seeing divine divinity and love beneath the surface and shaping others' worlds and experiences through the perception of the heart. So the next one that I have, air. Yep, a lot of mental, mental energy here. You have a strong connection to the air element linked with the mind, intellect, communication, and divination. Be sure to spend time outdoors <laughs> to recharge yourself. We talked about that, yeah. But in the end, that's going to help you utilize your mind. Oh, hello. Uh, sexual healer. You have the capacity to become a sexual healer with the skills to change sexual trauma, wounding, limitation that goes in on people's bodies and in their worlds. Interesting. So it could be somebody who um, does energy work or past life repression on people or any one of those healing modalities. Um teaching workshops to help other people, things like that. That's pretty cool. Pile number three. Let's see what we have here. Pile number three for the rusher, the person that's rushing here and there and everywhere. What do we have for pile three, please? Pile number three, what do we have for the and show me now? Dun, dun, dun. So we're going to be super excited about the ideas that we are gifted with. And I feel like this will be coming to you soon. I'll keep this PG. Yeah, because you could be a little bit, a lot of it in your mind right now with all of these swords. So basically your mind, your mindset, your ideas and things like that are being used against you um, because they're running rampant. There's no control over. Um, it's like you get an idea and you need jerk to react and correct course and things like that but yeah you feel trapped to do anything else it's like I have to move I have to do this I have to do that instead of just saying well you know 10 minutes of silence and like regrouping is going to do you so much better than making 10 decisions that you'll live to regret later okay you're up at night yeah maybe I think that you're fearing like another heartache another loss and things like that and so she's really guarding her heart here so what if this has to do with is definitely having to do with maybe perhaps your loved ones or something or someone that you love because you're definitely um, protecting that heart but there has to be a lot of you know a lot of thought behind it because if not you're going to I feel like you'll suffer monetarily and we definitely don't want that either so pal three what else do we have why are these cards here please this heartache and all of these being tangled in the mind. What's going on? Show me now. For one of you, not all of you, I feel like um, someone, this has to do with having anxiety over a parent who was unalived. Um, as I saw a big knife in this, you know, again, that's maybe for one person out there. But for the rest of you... We have this queen of wands here. So this is a need, a desire, an addiction, obsession to being the mover and the shaker and the candlestick maker. It's like, well, I can make moves and I have the capacity and I have the knowledge and I have the know-how and I have the, and you have all of the skills, but the skill that you are most lacking is the skill to be still. And that's going to prolong your longevity, I heard. Interesting. I'm having the seven of swords right here and I feel like this is you know decisions being made in the dark um, by you or this could even be obsessing over somebody who stole from you or took things from you and things like that so if it's not somebody else that did this to you that caused your heartache heart pain heart pain um, then this is something that you are really concerned with doing making moves um, behind the scenes so that I heard I cannot fail so you could be feeling those kind of 
life pressures, all encompassing life pressures. Show me what I need to see for pile number three, please. Pile number three, what's going on with pile number three with this obsession? Obsessive pile number three and show me now. We have sultry. Your serene presence makes you otherworldly with the ability to feel your physical sensations as they are very heightened, as they heighten, trapping those around you in your rapture. Well, now, you could be a siren. Basically, that's what I see in Dream Girl, yeah. So basically, like, you could be, like, making all these moves and um, even trying to avoid, like, heartache, heart pain, some way, somehow, but, like, somehow this can tie to romance because you're everybody's dream girl. You are sultry. You have many options in love, and that puts you in a place of power. You're their dream girl, the ultimate prize to win. Dream girl, dream guy. We don't read sex. We strictly read energy. So maybe you are obsessed with doing, 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 and you're not slowing down enough for love because you've been burned. And I hear that too. Show me what I need to see. Oh, hey, 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 hey. I'm going to take those. Two sides. You have two extreme sides to you, but yet with much grace and poise, this ability gives you an advantage by keeping them in wonder. Yeah, I think that people get like fascinated and even obsessed with you, which is interesting <clears throat> as we're talking about your obsession, but um, you're my obsession. Okay. Uh, fearless, you're bold about your joys in life, making you more vivid and alive to teach those, oh, more vivid and alive to those around you, teaching them to take more risks in life. Yeah. So you could be like a creative, a creative uh, person or a creative expression and how you uh, express yourself. Very sultry, siren-like. Yep. I like it. Unfortunate. You have a pioneering spirit that can manifest abundance easily. All that you touch turns to gold. Luck seems to be on your side. And maybe that's what you've been just really avoiding love and chasing um, luck, obsessing over, you know, creating things um, to, to manifest into this world. And that could definitely be an obsession with, you know, shutting down everything else. But it's really funny because even though you're doing that, it's like you're definitely, listen, pile number three, your milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to say that in spite of you like focusing and, and run, run, run and not wanting to stop, I feel like this is like a phobia of focusing on love and things like that. But people are definitely focused on you. You probably already know that, but I don't think that you're like really taking it serious or I don't feel like you, you're definitely not open to it currently. Um, and even slowing down and with the very first card that you got, breathe, hello. Um, that's going to be really helpful in, in making you progress from this run, running every situation. We're running from the devil, I hear. Van Halen, running from the devil. Is that it, I think? Okay. I'm the worst music co quoter, so you're welcome. Okay. Yep. What do we have? Okay. We've got a lot of cards. Tees. What? You can suck people in without them even knowing. You showcase your sexuality, but only if you get a chance to play with you. Making you a master in teasing. And maybe you are. Maybe you're a little tease. Mm, I don't know. Boss, you have your shit together. Being precisely who you are and in hot pursuit of your goals. Yep, we see that clearly. And they captivate and inspire others. Yep, you have big boss energy. You have daddy energy. Hypnotic. There is an intensity in your face, like staring into tiger's eyes, primal energies, with a whisper of chaos and passion, producing a sense of excitement in others. Yep, you're definitely like somebody who captivates people's attention, like it or not. Claire Saint this was not supposed to be shown. I'm going to have to do something about that. <laughs> Let's see. Yep, we're trying to abide by these rules. 
um, clairsentient. You have the ability to feel deeply in a situation, places, or people sensing something beyond the physical realm. And this card, let me read it off camera. You have royalty qualities that command power and causes extreme reactions. You're either loved or hated, challenging them to become better. Yep, something about you really challenges people. Um, and I think just your overall aesthetics or your drive, even your focus, you're seemingly unaware of people around you um, can actually prove to be a turn on. And I don't think that you're doing this deliberately because honestly, I feel like the last thing on your mind is romance or even trying to play games like this. But you ooze like natural boss energy and people are extremely attracted to you um, because many reasons. I mean, you're hypnotic. I feel like you could have like a lot of poise. You could be really, um, uh, you're an enigma, I heard. You're a great mystery, but also I feel like you could be a catalyst for many people around you into um, awakening. And that in itself could be very painful as well. Interesting. Okay. So the fact that you have major sex appeal is no secret here. Okay, a couple of cards for pile three. What do we need to know? Younger man dealing dealings or relationship with a younger man okay well he don't look too happy but <laughs> what else do we have these cards are yep i was feeling this february how funny i was feeling this very card so february can have some bearing on this so maybe you have to make a decision about february or in february that you may want to rush into because you feel like you don't have any options but you need to kind of just slow it down and think of it then we have kite vacation Okay, maybe you're going to be taking a vacation sometime in February, a staycation, maybe you're going to go fishing to the river, not unsuccessful plans. So this could have to do with a situation that was um, an unsuccessful man. So maybe you once upon a time were in love and you tried tying the knot unsuccessfully with the younger man or vice versa. Or you were unsuccessful in trying to vacation, um, and those plans kind of fell apart at that. Take care, enemies are working against you. Well, what else is new? But not surprised, look at all the magic you have on this board. Some of the magic I can't even show you because, you know, I'll get flagged and in big trouble. Probably get thrown in like YouTube prison or something. But hills, obstacles to overcome. But that's not new to you. So you've been there, done that been there done that what about this man rainbow the most difficult part of a situation is over yeah good so you have been through the worst of it and now things are going to get better dog close up pleasure with a close friend yeah so maybe you are going to find a new friend that's going to encourage you maybe be more optimistic or teach you some breathing techniques or somebody in your yoga class or something that will help you along those lines and you guys can become like good friends it all starts there right hopefully two more cards for my pile number threes pile number three in their exception show me now and i realize these readings aren't as fun as like the pure romantic ones but yours was the only romantic one out of the whole thing which justice is coming. One more. Shark. Swim away from this situation. Yeah, if that younger man is trying to hit you up again or younger woman, whatever the case may be, they don't even have to be an age younger, but I'm like, am I violating the, no. Um, but definitely even a younger energy. So you've been around the block with this person before. You definitely don't want any part of that mess. So that is what I have for you. I hope that that helps you. Pile number three. If you resonate with this reading, please do like, share, comment, subscribe. And until next time, much love to you. Namaste.